Good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome to the Licensing Committee meeting on Wednesday, the 6th of July at 10 o'clock. Uh, and a warm welcome to everybody watching on our Council YouTube channel, Hillingdon, London. My name is Councillor Roy Chamdale, and I'm the Chairman of the Licensing Committee. Um, the Committee considers topical matters in relation to the Council's various licensing functions. Details of the business today are shown on the agenda copies of which are available in the room. The agenda is also accessible online under the live broadcast. As a reminder for everybody in the room, you know the score. If you're going to speak, use the microphone on and off, otherwise your voice will not be picked up. A little bit of housekeeping. I'm not expecting a fire alarm today. If it does go off, it's the real thing. We know which way to go, and we meet outside the Miller's Tap, which is rather apt for licensing. The normal mobile and tablets, please switch your phones off or put them on silent because we don't want them disturbing us. Uh, resident feedback forms, very important. Um, we, do, we don't read them, but they do go to democratic services who do. So if you're so mindful for it, uh, complete one of those or you, uh, is it online? Do we, we, get, we get them online as well. So before we start the meeting, uh, normally I introduce, I can introduce uh, officers but I prefer everybody to introduce themselves. So we're going to move from right to left, who you are and what you're doing here. Uh, good morning, I'm Councillor Darren Davies, Vice Chairman of Licensing. Good morning, my name is Councillor Farley. I am a member of this committee. Good morning, Councillor Lakmana, and I'm a member of this committee. Uh, good morning, I'm Councillor Nelson West, and I'm a member of this committee. Good morning, Councillor Chamdell. Just an observer today. Good morning. My name is Lois King, and I'm a principal officer, principal licensing officer here at Hillingdon Council. Good morning, Daniel Ferrer, licensing team manager. Just in time. Um, do you want to go, Okay. Good. Good morning. Uh, my name is Farhad Chubdar and a member of this committee. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, Chairman, for the uh, My name is Sherry Aramid Bolana. I'm a councillor for Colum and Cowley. Good morning, Councillor Sullivan, member of this committee. Good morning. I'm Saleh Joby, the in-house barrister from Legal Services. Good morning. I'm Mark Braddock from Democratic Services, supporting the meeting. Chairman, we have apologies from Councillor Janet Gardner, who is watching on our YouTube channel, Hillingdon, London. minutes on 5th of October and we've agreed the minutes on the 12th of May. We go on to agenda item 5, confirm the items in part 1 and part 2. Uh, part 1 is in public, part 2 because of the various reasons they will be heard in private and we will come off the YouTube channel. Right, item 6, the role of the licensing committee. Mark. Thank you Chairman. Um, I'll take this report as Read to councillors. However, just to summarise, it sets out the role of the licensing committee. Appendix 1 to the report sets out the delegations or the powers that are in place relating to, in es essence, the five license licensing functions that you undertake the Licensing Act, Gambling Act, Sex Establishment Legislation, Scrap Metal Dealers, and Street Trading. So these are set out in Chapter 8 of the Council's Constitution. And which basically shows which body makes what type of licensing decision. So it's officers or the licensing subcommittee, in the case of policies, the cabinet, and in case of uh, a couple of the policies, the full council. Usually when, a plan when an application, a licensing application is considered, uh, where it's contested, 
the representations, it's usually considered by a subcommittee that you will sit on, if not by an officer. So this full licensing committee, all of you here, um, you don't tend to make many decisions and exist primarily to enable the subcommittees to discharge their duties. Um, you may, as a committee, from time to time, agree changes to the protocols, how the subcommittees operate and work. Um, this meeting, uh, this committee is scheduled four times a year. However, sometimes, um, with the chairman and committee's agreement, you might wish to um, rearrange one of those dates to perhaps be a training session or something like that instead. You also receive the minutes of the subcommittees uh, to ratify them for the record. Uh, Chairman, following approval of the new remodelled constitution at the Council AGM on 12th of May and Chapter 8, or Appendix 1 to your report, um, setting out the licensing delegations, I'd like to propose a, f uh, a new recommendation on the addendum sheet for the committee to consider. Basically, this um, provides for the committee to agree to establish the licensing subcommittee and the discharge of the licensing functions as set out in the constitution. Previous licensing committees have resolved this in the past, but given the fact we've just had the local elections, a brand new licensing committee, your inaugural meeting, I do advise that you reaffirm how the licensing functions are discharged for good governance purposes. Um, Chairman, um, I would uh, recommend that this recommendation is moved and seconded. Do we have a move for this? Moved by Councillor Chubadar. A seconder? Councillor Scott Farley. Is that agreed? Agreed. Yeah. Thank you. That's done. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions on that? No? You all read it intently. Yeah. Uh, well right, we move on to agenda item seven. Licensing case studies oral presentation. Who's going to shoot on that one? Is that you, Lewis? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you that haven't met me at a licensing subcommittee hearing yet, my name is Lois King. I'm a principal licensing officer here at the council. Since joining the licensing team from the council's food, health and safety team in October 2018, I think I can safely say there hasn't been a dull moment since. And I've been fortunate enough to work on a number of high-profile cases. So I'm here this morning just to talk to you about one such case. Um, and it involves a summary or expedited review. Um, hopefully you all had the opportunity to attend the members' training delivered by Mr Grant, so I'll try and keep the legislative element brief for you. So the provision for a summary or expedited review is found in Section 53A to D of the Licensing Act 2003, and Chapter 12 of the Section 182 guidance elaborates on the procedural elements of it. Internally, the process has been helpfully summarised for you in Appendix 1 of our hearing protocol, hearing protocol um, and I've given you a handout um, this morning where you will find Appendix 1 in there. So just very quickly, the criteria for the use of uh, expedited summary review. The premises has to be licensed for the sale of alcohol and a police superintendent or above has to certify that in his or her opinion the premises are associated with serious crime, serious disorder or both. The advantages um, of a summary expedited review in comparison to a standard review is that um, there is the ability for um, interim conditions or suspension um, to be put in place within 48 hours of um, the certificate being submitted by the police superintendent. There is a fast track review of the premises license within 28 days and there are safeguards to be put in place during an appeal period um, so we can, the interim steps can continue pending an appeal. Um, there's a summary review flowchart, which is a process that we um, as the licensing department and licensing committee have to follow. Again, it's quite small on the screen, so you'll find that in your handout as well. So, just going to give you a, a whistle-stop overview of uh, the expedited review process um, with a real-life example, and that is the Prince of Wales uh, 1 Harlington Road, Uxbridge. Um, for those of you that attended the training with uh, my manager, Dan, um, then he may have briefly referred to the Prince of Wales. Um, so there's a, bit, a little bit of background, a little history of the premises. 
Um, it was transferred to the um, owners at the time of the review in 2016. The style and operation um, changed. We, um, they had a shisha lounge and they would um, regulate entertainment. We were getting complaints of nuisance, um, health act issues to do with the shisha lounge. The police then responded to a serious incident in August 2019, a mass brawl involving 30 people. There was a suspicion then of underage drinking and uh, during a licensing compliance check in October 2019, there were non-compliance with the conditions. The licensing authority applied for a review of the license under um, the Prevention of Crime and Disorder, Prevention of Public Nuisance and Protection of Children from Harm licensing objectives. The licensing authority requested removal of the designated premises supervisor to modify conditions and to replace the existing plan because the premises had changed and the plan that was attached to the license didn't mirror what the plan of the premises um, was at that time. At a licensing subcommittee hearing December 2019, um, the conditions were modified. So, you'll be pleased to know that a summary or expedited reviews, they don't happen very often. But when they do, they tend to happen at the most inconvenient time you can possibly imagine. Um, Christmas being the most difficult one. And this case was no exception. <coughs> So on the 27th of November 2021, um, the police received a 999 call. Uh, they responded to a fight outside the Prince of Wales, which resulted in multiple knife attacks. Four persons suffered serious assaults. So two people received stab wounds, one to the lower back and one to the upper right back, respectively. A 16-year-old girl suffered a laceration to her arm from a knife, and that required stitches. And a fourth person was punched several times in the face, which resulted in swelling to the face, eyes, and cheek. On the 1st of December, the Metropolitan Police applied to the licensing authority for a summary review of the Prince of Wales premises license. The um, superintendent submitted his certificate, and in his opinion, he said the premises was associated with serious crime and serious disorder. So, wheels went into motion immediately. Within 48 hours of receipt of the certificate, the premises license holder and the responsible authorities were given notice of the review by the uh, licensing authority. And at the same time, the licensing authority must consider if interim steps are necessary pending a full review hearing. Now, there's no requirement to take interim steps. Um, we convened a licensing subcommittee on the 3rd of December to determine whether interim steps were required or not. Um, the police actually requested um, suspension. But the choices up, um, open to the licensing subcommittee in terms of interim steps were modifying or adding conditions, excluding the sale of alcohol, removal of the DPS, or suspension of the license. Now, again, you don't actually have to convene a full hearing. Um, it's a decision for members, not for um, members of the licensing subcommittee and not for officers. And that can be done by phone or email. Um, at this moment, um, in December of last year, it was done via MS Teams, and the, where everybody was participating over that um, platform. So the police, um, they requested a um, suspension. The licensing subcommittee, after hearing all the evidence that was presented, they um, took um, the decision to impose interim steps in the form of suspension of the premises license, and that took immediate effect. The licensing subcommittee felt that that was a proportionate step in order to keep residents safe and to uh, prevent um, further potential criminal offences taking place, particularly violent crime and underage drinking. Uh, the licensing subcommittee felt that the evidence presented showed that management of the premises was wholly lacking. So at the same time while this is happening, the, um, the review is advertised for no less than seven consecutive days. So we, work, we go and put a blue notice up at the premises, it goes onto the council website. Um, the notices had to be published on the day after the superintendent application was received. And there were 10 working days for represent, representations to be submitted. That can be by anybody, so that includes yourselves as uh, ward councillors and uh, members of the public. 
um, and all the licensing objectives are available to us for the summary review. In terms of the um, interim steps, um, you can appeal them. Um, well, they can make a representation against the decision of the licensing subcommittee, but in this instance, no representations were received. Had there have been, then we would have had to have convened a hearing, and um, that would have had to have taken place within 48 hours of receiving the reputation, representation from the premises license holder in relation to the interim steps. There is a specific process for that. I'm not proposing to go through that here, but um, again, that you will find in Appendix 1 of our protocol. The premises license holder was given notice over the phone about the interim steps decision, and that was followed up in writing the same day. So they had to close immediately. Well, they had to stop their licensable activities immediately. They could have stayed open as a restaurant if they so desired. Um, so the licensing authority has to hold a full review of the premises license and determine that review within 28 days after receipt of the application from the police. We have to give the premises license holder and the responsible authorities notice of the hearing no later than five working days before the day or the first day of the hearing, if it's a two-day or more hearing. So we were able to convene the licensing subcommittee on the 20th of December. This is what I mean about it. it's all being very, very quick and uh, maybe not terribly convenient for everybody involved um, that close to the Christmas break. But there can't be any adjournment of the hearing or any delay in reaching a determination beyond the end of that 28-day period. And the hearing has to take place even if the police subsequently withdraw their application. So the licensing subcommittee had to consider what steps were appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives taking into account any change in circumstances since the interim steps were imposed. They had to consider any relevant representations. In this case, we received um, further representations from the Metropolitan Police Service and also from the licensing authority as a responsible authority. And crucially, and this is the main difference between a, a standard and the summary um, in terms of the process, is that the licensing subcommittee has to review the interim steps as part of the full hearing. The options available to the committee at the full hearing is they're very similar to those that are our standard review, so modification and addition of conditions, exclusion of a licensable activity, removal of the DPS or designated premises supervisor, suspension for up to three months and revocation. And as in the standard review, it has to be appropriate and proportionate and the decision does not have effect pending appeal. So, as I already said, the full review hearing, the licensing authority is required to review any interim steps taken and that are in place at the date of the hearing and consider, is it appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives for them to remain in place? The premises license holder can submit representations and you have to consider those. Or you can decide that the interim steps could be modified or withdrawn depending on what actions the premises license holder has taken in the interim. Again, the interim steps that you can take here are as before, so modifying adding conditions, um, exclusion of the sale of alcohol, removal of the DPS and suspension of the license. But within the process, because it's an exp um, expedited and summary review, and that's come about because of serious crime and serious disorder, the interim steps that you take at this stage, they can apply until the end of the period for lodging an appeal, which is 21 days. They can apply if an appeal has been lodged until the appeal is disposed of, or a shorter period as directed by the licensing authority. So this is what the, uh, the, the, the licensing subcommittee heard during the full review. There was a history of incidents of violence and disorder both before the incident in November of 2021 and, the, um, and after the previous review. Um, so not only was there the mass brawl in 2019 and the incident on, in November 21, 
There were other incidents of violence and criminal behaviour associated with the premises. Now, admittedly, some of those were in the premises and some of those were outside, but there were a couple of um, ABHs, for example. There was, um, you know, there, there appeared to be a proportion of the customer base that were prone to violence and being uncooperative with the police, even after the violent incidents and, in, and injuries being sustained. Um, people just didn't want to, want to give any evidence to the police. They were very obstructive. Um, and, and there was just an escalation. The police were able to demonstrate that the violence was escalating um, and was a real cause, cause for concern. They heard about underage drinking at the premises. Um, so on the night of the incident, the 16-year-old who'd suffered um, laceration to her arm, she'd reserved a table for eight of her school friends who were 16 to 17 years old. The CCTV that was produced by the police um, in, in evidence, um, you could quite clearly see when she came into the premises, no checks, no age verification checks were carried out. Um, in her witness statement to police, she said that she had drunk a lot of alcohol during that evening. And the CCTV quite clearly showed um, her and her friends all, um, ordering drinks all night. Shots, shots, more shots, and constantly being asked once they'd reached their £100 limit to pay for the drinks. There was no evidence that they were ever asked for um, any proof of ID. Um, we had an anonymous call in October 2021 alleging that 14 and 15 year olds were in this particular premises drinking alcohol and not being challenged. Um, and that was investigated by the police who then were told of, uh, I think they spoke to the parents of, uh, of somebody, a 15 year old who was paralytically drunk, that was their words, um, when they returned from a night out and had been to this particular premises. So there were obviously um, issues there. Public nuisance being suffered by local residents from activities at the premises and uh, its customers. Again, both before and since the previous review. Um, glass bottles being emptied into exterior bins at midnight. Noise from drunken customers leaving the premises in the early hours of the morning. Noise from patrons in the external beer garden. Noise from entertainment, so music, singing, drums. Um, there are also problems with parking at the premises and, and just general antisocial behaviour um, with patrons leaving the premises. We heard about repeated breaches of licence conditions, so failure to carry out age verification checks on customers who appear to be under the age of 25. Um, number of customers being permitted to enter or re-enter re the premises after 10 o'clock at night. The external beer garden being used after midnight and a uh, record of refusals um, not being um, observed on the 27th of November, the day of the incident. Um, there was a general failure by management to adequately respond to the previous review hearing. So some of those conditions that were added to the premises license at the previous review hearing were not being adhered to. General mismanagement of the premises, uh, you know, obstructive um, behaviour by management not wanting to give over the CCTV footage. Um, not calling the police. Um, it was the London Ambulance Service who called the police to the brawl in, in um, 2019, not the premises. And the CCTV footage um, was, was, was shown to, to the licensing subcommittee and was, was, was quite damning, to say the least. So, the decision. Uh, I think you'd probably be unsurprised by this. The decision of the licensing subcommittee was to revoke the licence. Um, in addition to that, um, when they reviewed the interim steps, they decided to keep in place the suspension, and they decided to keep that in place pending the determination of any appeal, or alternatively, the expiry of the appeal period following the decision, which meant that when an appeal was lodged, if it took six months to get that into court, the premises licence was suspended until the court had made its decision on the appeal. The licensing subcommittee, in making its decision, said that they were not persuaded that any additional conditions could be placed on the premises to adequately resolve the issues, given that the conditions placed on the premises license at the last review did not appear to have been adhered to. Particular weight was given by the committee to the escalating level of violence, the serving to and consumption of alcohol by children on the premises, and the apparent inability of the premises to abide by current conditions on the licence. The committee considered all of the infringements serious breaches 
and as such had lost all confidence in the premises to uphold the licensing objectives. Now, as, um, as with most things, you can appeal. So uh, an interim steps review, that can be appealed to the magistrate's court, it can be appealed by the premises license holder and the police, 21 days to lodge that, and the appeal has to be heard by the magistrate's court within 28 days of lodging it. So again, this is why it's expedited. So suffice to say, the premises license holder appealed. Similarly, the final decision of the full um, hearing, that it can also be appealed to the magistrate's court, 21 days to lodge that, um, the premises license holder, the police, and anyone who made a relevant representation can appeal. Again, premises license holder appealed, unsurprisingly. Where an appeal is lodged against both the interim steps and the final determination, the courts can make a decision to hear both at the same time. And then you've got 28 days to, for the courts to, to, to hear that. As you can imagine, that's not easy considering this was all over the Christmas and New Year period as well. And with the current pressures on the court, trying to get them to put the date in the diary um, was not um, an easy task. There we go. So the interim steps appeal was heard at Uxbridge Magistrates Court on the 24th of January of this year. Um, because of the way the legislation was written, the judge was able to hear it and then reserve her decision, which she did until the 31st of January. The, um, I'll just give you some, some um, information about the appeal. The premises license holder appeal was primarily based on the license holder's case that A, the serious knife attack could have happened anywhere and the premises was not in any way to blame. The age verification system they had in place was adequate. The only serious issues arise from the incident on the 27th of November, and that D, the license holder, can be trusted to comply with an alternative set of conditions in place of the interim suspension. We obviously disagreed. Um, we felt the premises were, were problematic, poorly managed, and the evidence pointed to a total disregard for the Licensing Act. The council and the police did not agree that the additional conditions proposed by the license holder as an alternative to the interim suspension were appropriate to promote the licensing objectives. In fact, those very same conditions were considered and rejected by a very experienced licensing subcommittee who considered the actual full review. The council and police did not have any confidence that the license holder would fully comply with interim conditions, given their track record of breaching existing conditions on their license. A change in the licensable hours was unlikely to make a significant difference. Um, the 16-year-old girl that was injured arrived after half past eight, was drinking shots by nine o'clock in the evening, and left just after midnight. So reducing the hours, we felt, was never going to make a, a difference. Um, removing the designated premises supervisor, well, we'd already had one change of DPS following the previous review. Um, failures that the change in the licensing conditions were designed to address at the previous review had not only continued, but actually had increased. We felt the licensing subcommittee decision was right at the time, that it was made, and that it remained so. The district judge agreed with the council. Um, in her 18-page judgment, the DJ stated that the approach to checking the ages of customers was at best slapdash and at worst completely negligent and that there were some very worrying features in relation to the way in which the premises had been managed. The judge found that management did not take their responsibilities in relation to the licensing conditions, their legal obligations and the licensing objectives seriously. The district judge agreed with um, the licensing subcommittee's concerns, said they were well-founded uh, well and remained so. And the judge continued that she considered that the continued suspension of the license was not just appropriate, but essential to meeting the licensing objectives. So we, we won that one. The final decision appeal even there, that, that was withdrawn by the premises license holder following the interim steps appeal decision. I can only suggest that once they'd read the 18-page judgment and took into account how the district judge arrived at her decision, they felt that it wasn't worth pursuing. Um, I'm happy to cover, to take any questions that you may have. Well, thank you for that, Liz. Members, any questions? Councillor Lakmana. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, unless I've misheard, you said that um, communications were done through NST. Did I hear that correctly? Microsoft yes. Teams, Councillor. Oh, thank so you. It's an online, Teams, online platform. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Uh, well, thank you for that, Lewis. It's, it's good to... I mean, that was a, a serious incident. Um, but just to remind the committee, uh, licensing objectives are prospective, and they're concerned with the avoidance of harm in the future. So when you do get to sit on subcommittees, to remember that. Also, we are not about putting blame on any individual or organization. It is primarily avoidance of harm in the future. That's why sometimes people can have a look and say it's a lot of conditions, but these are to deter irresponsibly managed premises, ir irresponsible operators. That's why we have conditions, and the conditions are so there is no harm in the future. So things can happen, as Lewis pointed out, quite a lot of issues has happened. Um, but just a, a general point, Lewis, in terms of when it goes to appeal, I mean, it's a lot of time and effort and cost, I understand. How many cases have the London Borough of Hill and actually lost uh, which have been appealed? Just as a. Well, I can only speak for the time that I've been in the department, so since 2018, all the ones I've dealt with um, have, yeah, we, we've not lost to date. But some have, some have been withdrawn, I will clarify that. There have been some where the case that we've put together has been so compelling that um, legal, that counsel perhaps for the, for, the app, for the premises license holder has said, this, this is pointless, going any further with this. So um, they, some of them have been withdrawn at the very last minute. Um, so I don't know whether, whether Dan has any statistics or wishes to no, add to that. that that's, that's my understanding of it correctly as well. That's good. We want to keep that up. Um, I think it's a, a valid point also to remind that these things do take a lot of time. Um, I believe, I forgot my numbers right, something like 21 hours in subcommittee hearings. Uh, I think about nine or ten hearings. So, it, you know, these things are not taken lightly. Uh, whether they're something as serious as this, and they can be not less serious, but there can be still small issues we, that we might see, not like stabbings and fights and all the rest of it, but it does take time. So uh, thank you very much. Conor Lewis. Councillor, if, if I may, I would just like actually at this point to add to, to say thank you to Democratic Services, to Legal, and also to the councillors who were involved in every stage of this process. It was, the timescales are incredibly short. It was at Christmas. Everybody worked flat out um, in terms of producing the reports, organising dates for committees. It was a team effort, and it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have all pulled together and worked together really hard to, to get, to get the, the, the summary review and the expedited reviews all heard within the right time scale. So I would just like to express my thanks today to, to all those involved, because it, it was great and it worked really well, and we got the outcome that um, was, was desired. Okay, that's noted. Thank you. Uh, yeah, these things do take time. I mean, the last one I can remember is it took just close next to six hours, and I won't mention Councillor Lakmana and Councillor Sullivan, but we were pretty exhausted by the end of it. Uh, but thank you. Uh, right, we move on to agenda item eight. Mr Chairman... Mr Chairman, I'm here from um, Legal Services and I'll be dealing with agenda item number eight, which is legislative and industry update. My report would, um, will inform the committee of important um, legal changes or industry updates that I think you ought to be aware of. The first, as you would see from your report, is to do with licensing fees. Um, the local authority has, can suspend a premises license where they fail to pay their fees on time. However, they also have a discretion to suspend, um, in, in relation to that suspension. And um, the government have asked local authorities to consider not suspending 
a premises licensing fee where they are having uh, and difficulties in making payment due to COVID. Um, so the local government um, association recommended that um, local authorities or local licensing authorities should consider not suspending a premises license until the business has come back into business and uh, back to full operation. The second issue that I'd like to update you on deals with pavement licensing. As you're all aware, there were, intri there were introduced um, in July 2020. The government has now extended that to expire on the 30th of September 2022. However, in the latest bill, the levelling up and regeneration bill that was introduced, there are, there are provisions to make that permanent. So for now, it's been extended to the 30th of September, however it may be permanent. The other issue is off-sales. Off-sales were also extended to the 30th of September, However, the government has now indicated that it will not be extended further as there are no COVID restrictions currently in place. So these are the important legislative and industry changes that I, you ought to be aware of. Um, I'm happy, Mr Chairman, to take any questions if you have any. Thank you. I'll kick off on this. Uh, first of all, um, with the off-sales, how are we letting uh, licence holders uh, of the changes or Daniel anybody any office uh, yeah, yeah chairman uh, we're foreseeing that by contacting um, the license holders and, and advising them that provision is no longer going to be um, extended past the 30th of September and that's what we'll be doing thank you and also on page 19 uh, you talk about uh, license being suspended how many have been susp suspended so far? Do we know that? Um, I don't have the exact figures at this point in time, but I'm happy to, to get them back to you. But generally what I would say is, following the advice that uh, Mr Joby has stated, we have taken, followed the Minister's letter and taken quite a light touch. So I'll be surprised if we suspended any during the COVID, following the guidance. But now, since the restrictions have been removed, we'll be looking at chasing up those annual fees. Uh, not threatening, but advising that there will be suspensions following non-payment after, you know, escalation of letters being sent by our um, debt collecting um, sections. Okay. So I, I, I believe it's not a high number, but I can double check that. Uh, I, I welcome the part about the payment license. I think I think that's been a welcome change in how we eat and drink. Um, if there's anything good that comes out of COVID, not many, but I think believe that is one definitely. Um, while well, we've got legal here, um, just ask your opinion, as with uh, with members as well. I've got to switch that off first while I finish. Um, in terms of in summing up, when we when we have subcommittee hearings, uh, it, it's always been the case where we would have the decision done and dusted there on the day. Uh, could you just clarify in terms of wh what time, type of timescales do subcommittees work to? in terms of delivering that, the verdict, should we say? <coughs> Chairman, in terms of the deliberation stage that you're referring to... In, in terms of th that we, we, we give the decision to the applicant, licence holder, whatever. <coughs> I'll just check with Daniel. In terms of the, after the committee's made its decision, the timescale for notifying the applicant... I'll have to double check. I'm just confirming with my uh, with um, my colleagues. I, I believe as well. it's five working days. I believe so. so I don't. Want, I, 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 yeah, I believe it's five. I, I think that is important because going by what Lewis was saying about what the district judge said, the reason behind when decisions are made, because uh, we spend a lot of time deliberating over a decision, which we you know we dot the i's, we tick the t's and we go through everything that's been presented, both verbally and written. And it's essential that we get all that down on paper when we give the judgment. So the last thing you want to do is fall down 
on something which has not been this only the salient points of a meeting you know we've got to have them put down so I, I think it might be a step change in terms of subcommittee hearings that we don't deliver the verdict on the day uh, in terms of uh, the judgment um, the written judgment um, so I think that's one to just to keep on the back burner well, let's have a go ahead. any other questions on that no? Oh, yeah. Councillor Farley. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to follow on from what the Chair was asking about the uh, licence fees. So when we came out, sort of when the restrictions were lifted, is that at that point, or was there thought sort of like a, a, a point at which we still continue to implement the discretion? It's an and, important and how, when that sort of... Yeah, it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an important um, point. Um, this was debated with a lot of local authorities during the period of the time, um, and the general consensus was that the Licensing Act provided no discretion about, you know, not um, of um, not having any sort of time gaps or sort of any breaks. So what we done as a council, like most other boroughs, was administratively sent out those reminders saying you have to pay these things. But then we took a balanced and proportionate view about whether we enforced that particular non-payment of debt. And I think coming out of it, we've made the right decision where we've allowed that. And yes, we have accrued some, some debt, but now we're working back on that, excuse me, in, uh, and chasing that up following the, re the removal of restrictions. So that's hard. And, and what we've seen now coming out of it is more visits from us, more um, um, letters being sent to them to remind them, look, this is now finished. But also what we found out practically is some of those businesses have gone. So who we've been provisionally writing to may be um, incorrect over those two years. So it's a fact-finding thing for us, um, writing to them, but also getting out there and seeing if those operators still are still operating, carrying out license activities. Because if they're not, then are they the right people to write to? Just one more, actually, just on the background. Uh, on page nine, about ward, ward councillors' call-ins. Uh, Maybe this one's for you, Daniel. Can we? I think it's it's critical that we continue the process of where councillors are informed of any variation license applications. Uh, can you just tell us how that is going forward? We're going to keep that up. Yeah, I think uh, um, Mark has kindly put this in the in the papers as well. But it, you're consulted on every variation. Thank you. I, th I think that's it's very good. Also, there's a comment about. The provision exists for planning applications to planning committees. Uh, I think this is where we, we differ greatly, thankfully, is that any councillor which calls in a decision has to give a reason at, from the, one of the four licensing objectives. Not case, just call it in and that's the end of it. And they have to turn up and obviously make their case, which I think is absolutely right. Right, we move on to number nine, site visits to licensed premises. Who's taking this one? Anybody's coming? Chairman, I think it's just a verbal discussion. I think there's a desire by some members of the, sub, of, of the committee to visit perhaps a, a, an exemplar licensed premises for you to see how things operate. And I don't know whether Daniel wants to perhaps lead on. No, uh, I think um, you know this is something that has been sort of like raised um, formally and informally with us, and I believe it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, we, I, I assume we're talking about. Um, just our normal proactive visits rather than visits in relation to particular applications firstly and if it's the former then we are you know more than happy to to do that it's just arranging with individual uh, members and logistics really in fact you know we regularly go out and we do evening visits and we're quite happy to do that with councillors as, as well um, I think it will be very very sort of informative and interesting for you so we, we're, we're not against it at all but I'll be interested to hear your you know, your colleagues' comments in relation to how that would work. Councillor Davis. Um, I think this was one of the things that I brought up. What it is, in, I found in this subcommittees, we make a lot of decisions on premises, but we don't actually see the good ones. We, we don't see what works in some venues, what doesn't work. So when the police go out and do their licensing checks, it may be worth taking or contacting the ward councillors or someone from the subcommittee and saying, we're out, do you want to come along as a ride-along sort of thing? Um, and that way we just get a better insight, because at the moment some of the things we see is just a lot of bad news, and I think it's sometimes better to see the good news and the good premises that are operating really well. 
No, I would, I would, I would agree with that and concur with that. Well, I think that's a very good point, Councillor Davis. I think uh, to physically see it, uh, and then because when you're obviously up before the committee, you see lots of pictures and everything else. But actually, and it's quite right to see a, a well-run premises. I think that's the answer. You see a well-run premises, and then when you, oh, when you might be doing your shopping and walk into a shop, and then the first thing you're looking at, have they got the signs in the right place? You know, is a, is a liquor stored behind the counter? Is it above? Is the door closed? Yeah, small things like that. Yeah, and, and they, all, they all make a difference. So, yeah, so, you, Danny, you, you, you'll plan that out and uh, let the committee know, yeah? Yeah, sure. Right, we rapidly move on to agenda item 10, the forward planner, Mark. Thank you, Chairman. This um, is <coughs> what it is, really, the forward planner plans out your, your work program over the next few meetings. If you look at the um, October one, if you're happy, we've scheduled a trading standards presentation on. We had one, uh, I think, a year or two ago now, which was quite informative, and the, uh, the representative from trading standards attends and takes you through all the counterfeit goods and shows you them as well. Um, that's in a part two session of the meeting, closed session, <coughs> um, for obvious reasons and it's, you get a good flavour of um, the things that officers look for when they go and inspect a, a licensed premises, an off-license, something like that. That's quite useful. And then we've got the Statement of Gambling Policy. That is going to Cabinet in, um, in September for draft, for consultation. We have to review the gambling policy every few years, so it, if you like, it's a matter of course coming to this subcommittee for your views in at your October meeting. And then on the uh, January uh, meeting, we've suggested if you, you're happy, a uh, presentation from another respons uh, responsible authority, the, the antisocial behaviour environment team, we can talk about some of the things that they do. But if you've got any other suggestions, members, um, let me know or, or, or speak um, at the meeting. Are we happy with that? Any more? To, anything to add? No? Great. Right. We're going to move on to part two. So, everybody on YouTube, Janet. Bye-bye.